Hello, just in case you don't know who I am, my name is Bryn, Bryn Davies, Chef de Michon of the Australian sports team at the Asia Pacific Deaf Games 2015. Um, finally, we've been able to give you an update today. It's been extremely busy. We've been busy preparing uh, the team for the Asian Pacific Deaf Games since we've all arrived. Um, there were delays because of the uh, typhoon um, that came through Taiwan. So that caused a few issues a few days ago. Uh, and the uh, organising committee have done a fantastic job organising transportation, especially with the delayed flights that have occurred. It was an enormous responsibility and uh, it's run rather smoothly considering all the uh, challenges we've faced. Today we have the opening ceremony, but uh, we did have the football competition start yesterday and we have further competitions coming up. So football started yesterday, it was Australia versus Iran and Iran um, is uh, certainly a challenging team to uh, take on because they're uh, generally known as being at top of the ladder. So we uh, will have some photographs taken of that match from yesterday. That Okay, with the football, like I said, unfortunately they did play Iran and they lost 5-0. Uh, so um, it was quite competitive in the first hour, uh, being 1-0. And I think the guys were a little bit tired towards the end. Iran had just the experience and the class, um, which was quite outstanding, and it meant that they scored the additional goals, 5-0 in the end. But a good experience for the Australian guys. Um, they had an hour um, dealing with the, uh, the best team in the competition, being Iran. So um, they really struggled, but um, nevertheless feeling good about that experience. Also, moving on, last night, we had the uh, first Australian uh, team official function held here at uh, Tao Yen Hotel for the uh, Asian Pacific Deaf Games. And with that function, we made the announcement with regards to the flag bearer for the opening ceremony and also the team captain's announcement. So I'll, I'll fill you in shortly, but first of all, I do have one of the uh, team captains here, Mark Bilic. So Mark is uh, involved in basketball, but um, also he has been selected as one of the team captains. So we selected uh, somebody from the team sports who could be there for advice and so on. So welcome, Mark. Um, thank you for agreeing to talk to us today. How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm feeling good. So how did you feel being selected? It was, you know, it's a big responsibility being team captain. Um, yeah, it's really interesting to meet new faces while we're here, be part of the team, the you know, the little uh, younger people coming through who are in athletics, new faces that I'm meeting, being able to provide advice from my own experience in the past, my uh, experience in the games, how to prepare mentally, physically, and just enjoy the hol holiday and, and the travel in Taiwan as well. Yeah, so it's been a fantastic experience for sure. And I guess from DSA and the DS, uh, sporting community, families and friends, I'd like to congratulate you being nominated as team captain and I hope that um, you'll continue on with basketball and your pursuits and whatever you wish to achieve in the next little while. So good luck. Thank you. Well done. So we have Mark as team captain. The other team captain is uh, John Louis. You might know him from tennis. And John uh, is involved in individual sports and he's been selected from that field. And uh, he'll give an update later on. Also, the uh, flag bearer for the Australian team for tonight's opening ceremony uh, is somebody who has had years of experience and has been very successful in their field of sport since 2005, 2009, 2012, 2013, and won various medals. And that person is Reese Emerson Van Beek. Most of you would be familiar with Reese, who's involved in the cycling. He's been extremely successful and committed to his uh, sport. So well done, Reese, uh, being flag bearer for the opening ceremony. A great honour.
So, as I said, we had the opening ceremony this evening. Uh, we have various aspects of training happening with the various sports today. And we're all very excited and looking forward to the opening ceremony. Here at the hotel, we're one of six uh, hotels for the Asia Pacific uh, Deaf Games. There's certainly a nice hill here, a nice vibe. It's almost like an athlete's village with uh, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Australia, all um, staying here. It's a wonderful feeling, so that's going quite well. We look forward to the next few days um, mixing with the various teams on the meals and throughout the er various areas we're involved in. We'll give you various updates after the opening ceremony, but uh, hopefully you can watch that uh, live, because it will be live stream. And we'll see you next time. Go Australia, come on. It is time for the introduction of the terrific experts. Australia, welcome to Taiwan. Welcome to Taiwan. Now it's time for the Hi there, it's me again, Bryn Bryn Davies, Chef to Michon, and I've got another update for you in regards to the Asia Pacific Deaf Games. We've done the update uh, in regards to yesterday, but today we've had the opening ceremony. So we're just um, here having dinner at our hotel after the opening ceremony, and uh, unfortunately a lot of the athletes have gone off to bed. So we're still up uh, quite late to give you the update this evening from our hotel. So the opening ceremony tonight, um, it was absolutely fantastic. We were proud to lead the team, having Reese, uh, the, the flag bearer, lead us out onto the field. Um, 50 um, athletes together with 1,170 athletes from all the countries from throughout Asia into the stadium. We had a bit of a crowd and audience, they did the usual stuff with the various speeches. And once we were seated, we were uh, entertained with various performances. Um, it was really a, a feast for the visual senses. Um, a lot of visual stuff happening that was absolutely amazing. It was just gobsmacking. Absolutely brilliant for deaf people to see. Obviously, um, there was sound and they weren't relying on that, but it was more the visuals, the lights, and also the vibes and the drums um, and the beat that you can actually feel carry throughout the stadium. It was brilliant. Wouldn't you agree, Dean? Yes, it was very enjoyable. Though. The feeling, um, you know, the, the whole show, the performance, the, uh, it, the acting, it was just a wonderful experience. It was very well organised. So here we have Dean Barton-Smith. So uh, he's actually on the DSA board and representing DSA with the international sports relations component of the Games. So Dean's been attending the Congress at the Asia Pacific uh, Deaf Games. Um, for the last two days, and uh, he, he's just finished up today with those meetings. So I just wanted to ask Dean, how did the Congress meetings go over the last two days? The Congress was interesting. Um, we had uh, 20 countries in attendance, or 20 delegates. And we discussed, um, I guess, the changes to the Constitution um, with the various updates, and also needing to consider the future. So we're quite aware there's a lot of uh, work to do in the Asia-Pacific region and it was uh, quite interesting for me because with the Asia-Pacific region there are 17 countries, countries within that area, three members, um, New Zealand, Fiji and Australia and the other 14 um, are not as involved so we're really wanting to be, get them to become members in the Pacific region 
um, and identify those sporting people who uh, have potential. We also talked about the president of ICSD, the International Sports Committee, Valerie. He was in attendance and he talked about uh, the events in terms of the relationships occurring with the uh, International Olympic Committee and also the uh, International uh, Paralympics, forming those networks and relations and realising that some uh, countries do have issues with funding and support and Australia's not alone in that. There are other countries are struggling with those challenges in terms of how they can actually work better together um, to uh, get visibility for athletes to support their needs and requirements. Mostly it's been about looking back and also looking forward. So we had really good discussions and today I think uh, it's been really interesting having those discussions about the changes to the board and recently we had uh, elections as you know it happens every four years so David Peters um, as you all know is a life member of Deaf Sports Australia and has been for many years he's also on the board of the Asia Pacific uh, Deaf Sports um, Confederation and he decided to stand for either, uh, well they were looking at somebody to stand for either the presidency or um, general secretary or a uh, various committee members, but as president, a gentleman from Iran by the name of Mohammed Paga, I think his sign name is Mohammed, from Iran, um, was interested, David Peters decided to pull out and uh, wasn't interested in the presidency and the Iranian accepted that, he's quite young, he's about 37, he plays football. Um, pleasant to deal with. And then we had the elections for the General Secretariat. There were two uh, nominees, I think one from Thailand and um, David Peters. David Peters uh, won the vote, 14 votes to six. Well done David. So now David Peters is officially the General Secretary for the Asia Pacific um, region for the next four years. So well done David and congratulations. So it will definitely improve uh, in the area of communication having David in that, no doubt. And one other thing that I wanted to talk about was the need for more um, athletes or their voices to be heard in any decision making going forward. So they've accepted the need to consider athletes' needs and their contribution in the learning process. And last of all, uh, Australia um, was trying to strategically raise the importance of women on the board and representation of females, um, any deaf sporting organisations. So we discussed that and everybody agreed strongly that uh, Asia Pacific um, Deaf Sports Confederation in the future need to at least have a minimum of one woman on the board going forward. So um, that's a huge step and um, a huge milestone out of that Congress. A lot of the other stuff is a little bit dry. I don't want to bore you to death, but those are the main points that came out of that. Right, thanks Dean. And particularly around um, that issue with uh, women on the board, that's certainly long overdue and it's certainly um, time for them to keep up with the time. So I do look forward to uh, their positive response into the future. And as Valerie mentioned, the change of the uh, board dynamics and hopefully they'll move uh, forwards in the future. Yeah, so every four years, I mean the next four years will be an interesting time, but hopefully we'll see a lot of improvement with communication, the growth, looking at uh, youth, and I walked away from that Congress quite hopeful, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with um, you know, these people on the board now. Right, thank you so much Dean for the update with the, the Congress, it's been brilliant. It's a really interesting uh, development that's occurred over the last couple of days with the Congress and uh, the opening ceremony um, really kicking the ball off uh, in terms of the Asia Pacific Deaf Games starting from here. As you know we uh, lost the football match, Australia lost yesterday, um, but tomorrow they're playing Kazakhstan. Uh, so there's kind of talk that the footballers feel fairly confident that they should achieve a good result, so we do wish the Australians good luck with that tomorrow. And also we do have cycling. Reese Van Beek um, tonight was a flag bearer. He's now in bed uh, preparing for his 1,000 metre sprint, which is going to be held tomorrow. So good luck to you, Reese. And also one of our two youngest athletes uh, in the team. Um, uh, they have their debut tomorrow with athletics. So that's Jamie Howell and Neve Colvin. <coughs>
I'm not quite sure what uh, the events are, but we'll keep an eye on that. But we do wish them luck as well. So we've got uh, three main events occurring tomorrow. And then tomorrow night we'll do another update uh, as to how they've gone with that. And just keep an eye out uh, on the team app. We do have a team app that's available for all the uh, Australian team and supporters. And a lot of information is in that. We do encourage you to uh, download that from Google Play or from iTunes um, App Store, depending on the type of phone that you have. It is free, you don't pay any fees. Access that and you'll get regular updates uh, instantaneously. So we'll encourage that and um, that will go onto the DSA Facebook page as well. The team app details will be uh, up on the page for you. Great. Thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow night. Go Australia!